Alright, hello citizens of the Nightverse, it is not here once again, and this is going to be another wrestling review. So, oh, yesterday, hey, WWE once again traveled to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia uh, for uh, Crown Jewel. Oh so, oh, so, five championships on the line, who took home the gold? Let's find out. Uh, so, as always, I'm not professional, not professional uh, wrestling reviewer, and let's just manage a good time, which, for the most part, I definitely had with this show. Uh, in terms of my predictions, which I predicted over on System Shock Radio, and it's funny because uh, I recorded the episode before um, before or the event, but it went up after the event. So I actually recorded it around like I believe 11 or so yesterday, and then um, it didn't. But System Shock Radio doesn't go up, didn't go up till eight because uh, my videos normally don't go up until eight unless I'm late on them, which has happened a number of times. But um, but it's funny that. Uh, and, uh, looking back on it in kind of like a retrospective, it got stuff right, got stuff wrong kind of way. And I think, but I think with these predictions that I predicted this time around, I think I got, I think I got like most of these right. Um, hey, um, I think I got like, uh, one or two wrong, but I got, but I think I did get most of these right, but uh, nevertheless, uh, without further ado, let's, let's see what happens. So, uh, if you've seen these reviews of mine before, you kind of already know how this works. If you haven't, I'm going to be talking about what I liked and what I disliked about the match, and we're going to go, uh, match by match, as we normally do for these types of reviews. Um, the only exception is the pre-show match, because I did not watch the pre-show. Oh, and that being, uh, Sami Zayn, I mean, battling J.D. McDonough, as J.D. McDonough continues, uh, to try to earn his way into the Judgment Day, and to surprise of absolutely no one, couldn't get the job done against Sami Zayn. I did see on Twitter that somebody posted a video of, uh, J.D. McDonough doing the one sell as Sami Zayn, uh, did the Irish whip, uh, into the corner, and J.D., like, flipped it, uh, uh, after hitting the turnbuckle. That was pretty funny, but otherwise, yeah, Sami Zayn in the win. Uh, poor J.D., yeah, yeah, come on, at least give him a participation trophy, Judgment Day. His name is literally JD, come on, throw him a bone here, but, uh, uh nevertheless, um, as, uh, kicking off with the World Heavyweight Championship, and, uh, kind of spoilers, it's, uh, kind of interesting that a World Championship match opened and then closed the show, but, uh, in an open match for the World Heavyweight Championship, Seth freaking Rollins, uh, defended against Drew McIntyre, <laughs> um, here, so, oh, uh, it is put up or shut up time for Drew McIntyre. Or, um, or, uh, throughout the build, they show Ode oh, in a recap of the build. Drew McIntyre talking about his experience winning uh, the WWE Championship in front of absolutely no one due to COVID, how that got brought up, and that being a big part of this feud and him wanting to win the title here. Uh, as Drew McIntyre slowly uh, goes into his heel turn, uh, feeling almost dejected. Uh, it, um,. But he wants Seth Rollins, he wants to face him at 100%, and so that's what Drew's going to do here. So no more excuses. Can Drew McIntyre take the World Heavyweight Championship from Seth Rollins? No. But it was still a good match. Uh, at, um, at these two, I think, I think, worked pretty solidly against each other. Or, uh, and they brought up on commentary uh, how when Drew was W champion during COVID, uh, Seth was one of the people he defended the title against, which I literally almost forgot that Drew uh, defended against Seth. At, um, but that's because um, the COVID era WWE, uh, pandemic era WWE, where there was no crowd or they had like the uh, performance center, um, performance center recruits uh, filling up the crowd. Those were some weird times, but uh, no, but nevertheless, yes, yeah, uh, uh, but um, yeah, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty decent match for the most part. Or uh, Drew targeting Incess back at time, times. Uh, and uh, really going after him, and Seth having to find the resolve to uh, beat McIntyre, ultimately uh, finishes him off with the pedigree, and uh, stomp, um, uh, um, it took two stomps uh, to beat Drew McIntyre here, er, um, and meanwhile Drew uh, delivered a Claymore, and that wasn't able to put away Seth Rollins, so Seth continuing to be the, the workhorse champion, at least for now, uh, um, and I mentioned how um, the match could go, Oh, a few, oh, oh, a few different ways, and it looks like, like they're gonna milk out Drew McIntyre's heel turn a little bit more because Drew McIntyre walks off, off, um, off. So, off after the match, after Seth wins and everything, and, uh, and, uh, 
Drew walks off, off and um, Damien comes out to cash in. It's ultimately Sami Zayn who ends up saving the day for Damien Freeze. He's and he shows up in a hood and everything. Man, what is it with people showing up in hoods uh, to thwart plans? But uh, but Sami Zayn showed up in a hood and everything. Stole the Money in the Bank briefcase from Drew from uh, Damien Freeze. And what's with people stealing briefcases too? Oh my goodness. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so uh, the Judgment Day gets thwarted there. At, at, least, at the very least, Damien Priest does. Uh, and uh, but also Drew McIntyre. Her um, something of interest is afterwards. Drew McIntyre kind of sulking, upset about his loss. Rhea Ripley kind of gives him that "I told you so" look, which they point out in commentary. He uh, very much "I told you so" look because uh, um, uh, the Judgment Day have been trying to recruit Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins into the fold. Old and. Um, <clears throat> And neither of them took it, and now Drew essentially paid for it. So, where's this lead? We'll have to find out in the future. But yeah, a pretty solid match uh, between these two. Who, uh, but next up, uh, speaking of Rhea Ripley, she defends her Women's World Championship in a fatal five-way against Nia Jax, Raquel Rodriguez, Shayna Baszler, and Zoe Stark. All right, uh, pretty good showing from all five women involved. They brought up... Uh, they brought up Zoe Stark being kind of the dark horse in this match, which he was, uh, but she, he, uh, did really well, and I think all five ladies, uh, did pretty well for the most part, really showing, uh, kind of the strengths of everyone involved, including a really awesome, uh, Z360 on Rhea Ripley, she, uh, really sold for that one. Ultimately, uh, Ripley, he, um, he, I believe it was the super rip tied, uh, off the top rope, um, a war is called an avalanche riptide. Hey, yeah, yeah, so avalanche riptide. Hey, literally onto everybody. He, uh, and then pinning uh, Shayna Baszler. Or, and they, and uh, mentioned on commentary, he, she did the riptide on everybody. I think the only person that she missed was Rodriguez, because I think Raquel Rodriguez was still on the outside. But delivering the super riptide on everybody and pinning who got the worst of that. And it was Baszler, because everybody landed right on Baszler. Uh, so Ripley retains there. So yeah, uh, pretty pretty, uh, pretty decent match. Um, uh, the pretty decent uh, five way there. Or, uh, then, and next, uh, of, uh, of, uh, Solo Sokoa, uh, bat battles John Cena. Uh, John Cena has not had a singles win, uh, since 2018. Can he get it over Solo Sokoa here? No. Oh, uh, and, and it's almost, like, hey, they almost lead you one way and then swerve it because they put over on commentary how Cena hasn't had a win. And, uh, and, uh, he needs this win. He feels like if he doesn't get this win, um, and, uh, and uh, he loses the support of the WWE Universe. At least that's what he feels uh, himself. Oh, uh, so it almost they almost suck you in into thinking, oh, uh, yeah, of course Cena's winning after this one. And I did, uh, in my predictions, I think I did remember saying this one could go either way, but Solo really could use the win over a big name like Cena. Uh, but uh, with that, the way they put it over, I'm like, oh, they're giving away the finish. Cena's winning. Uh, no. Oh, uh, oh, it was a red herring. It was a diversion. Uh and, and uh, not only did Solo defeat John Cena, but he did it in very dominant fashion. Deli and in the end, delivering several Samoan spikes, uh, Cena pretty much just uh, totally decimating him. him and, and man, you could feel each one, at least within the crowd, you could feel each one on as Solo pretty much, pretty much almost killed John Cena. Uh, you know, uh, to pick up the win here, uh, getting his revenge for when Cena beat Umaga, uh, but um, yes, yeah, Solo a very dominant win over Cena. Uh, I'm not mad at the oh, just uh, not quite expectations, but you know what? Sometimes subverting expectations is a good thing, and I think it definitely works here. Your Solo is built up like a monster, or uh, for absolutely decimating John Cena, uh, and I'll be honest, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the Simone Spike as a finisher, or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, I don't know what about it, just, it probably because it's essentially just, it's a punch, punch, the only, the only difference is, like, the thumb being kind of like the, um, being kind of the point where it's supposed to be sharp, or, but I think that's supposed to be the gimmick behind it, it, so I think it works better when it goes, like, the face, or even, like, the neck area, not really on the chest, like, when Solo did, uh, when Solo did, when Solo did to uh, Cody at Mania, but uh, Solo definitely he looked good here and uh, decimating Cena and Cena kind of doing uh, the slow walk out as the crowd like cheering him on, on um, almost what he did when he lost to Roman at uh, no 
and No Mercy 2017. Um, you know, so was this the end of John Cena? Did Solo pretty much just kill the, uh, the C Nation? Um, we'll have to wait and see. But if this was uh, John Cena's last ride into the sunset, because I believe his um, his like return, her, uh, his like return dates are up um, after Crown Jewel here. I think this is like supposed to be the last appearance of John Cena, if I'm not mistaken, at, at least in terms of um, the set, uh, the set at uh, return dates that he was given. Uh, and let me know if I'm uh, correct or incorrect about that. But, but uh, if this was the last hurrah for John Cena. Uh, putting over a younger star in Solo, someone who uh, they're apparently very high on, who they definitely want to push in the future, which, or which uh, definitely is understandable, but um, uh, someone who they, who they want to put, push in the future. I think uh, Cena putting over Solo here, I think, is a pretty um, is a pretty solid thing. And so, oh, like I said, Solo is very dominant here uh, against Cena. Uh, so, uh, congrats to Solo on the win. And, and, uh, not a bad match. Obviously, he's Cena getting, um, getting his stuff in, but Solo getting most of the offense and the win, I think. Um, I think, it also helps put over how, uh, Cena's not quite as, um, doesn't quite have the same comeback powers like he used to because Cena takes the offense and then comes back and gets the win. But here, none of that. At, uh, at Superman essentially meeting Doomsday, uh, if you will, which if you get that analogy. But uh, yeah, so uh, Solo gets the win here. here uh, her, um, and then I believe uh, it was after this match where we got uh, the uh, Miz TV segment. Uh, and um, Miz TV, he, um, he where the Miz interviewed uh, Hood, and I think I'm pronouncing his name right. I, I I'm probably gonna pronounce it wrong. Ibrahim Al Hajaji, he, um, I believe that's how it was pronounced. Uh, um, pronounced uh, he was just recently in a movie, so uh, two movie stars essentially, he, uh, one after the other. And um, uh, but uh, Grayson Waller came out to interrupt, so the Miz has had to deal with him. And I guess this really is like the Miz's face turn. Uh, him dealing with Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller pretty much trying to. Uh, replace uh, the Miz TV set with the Grayson Waller effect set, and he even had like the uh, ring crew on standby, uh, pretty much like take out the director's chairs that the Miz had and uh, and put in like the plants and stuff uh, for the Grayson Waller effect. Uh, but the Miz ultimately with the skull crushing finale, uh, Hajiji with the people's elbow. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which one was worse between his and Snoop Dogg's, uh, <laughs> um, but. But, never, but nevertheless, uh, as um, but yeah, so there, there's that segment there, kind of just like uh, giving the crowd a chance to catch their breath. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, well, uh, the Miz full on face now. If you were curious as to whether or not they're fully going through with the Miz's face turn, uh, I guess there's your confirmation. Uh, but then next up, uh, up uh, is the U.S. title match as Logan Paul. Uh, seeks to take the U.S. championship from Rey Mysterio, which he does. Uh, is, uh, is um pretty solid match uh, between the two. Ooh, and here, here's the thing. Like, I went into it like I, I knew Logan Paul was winning this match. I didn't necessarily want him to, only because I feel like it's Rey. He, he plus uh with Logan kind of being like a celebrity, he, uh, him holding championship gold. I, I don't know. Oh, maybe that's just me. But uh, but um. But I don't think I mind it as much, uh, because as the thing about Logan Paul is he gets it. He he definitely gets it. It to his credit. Uh, it, and I think I mentioned this in my predictions. Say what you want about Logan Paul as a person, but he definitely gets it. Like, like uh, including when when uh, and Ray almost like uh, almost had a horrific botch where he landed on his head. Uh, but Logan was able to catch him, and that is definitely the mark of like a professional uh, being able to protect Ray. And some people will have speculated uh, it what um, uh, whether it it was uh, pretty much like a misslip or a slip on the part of Ray Mysterio or like Logan wasn't in position. But either way, Logan um, instinctually going to protect Ray a, and not let him land on his head and uh, catch him uh, pre to prevent a very serious botch. Uh, just like that is definitely he, uh, he a, that is definitely he, like, hey, as a, a fellow wrestler, you uh, could, you couldn't ask for more or really 
you then to protect your opponents and to make sure that nothing horribly bad goes wrong. Um, and, um, and of course, uh, mistakes do happen in uh, pro wrestling. That's just the nature of the sport. But but uh, Logan going to protect Ray a, and prevent something uh, seriously bad from going on. Whether or not something very serious would have happened uh, and uh, is uh, is up is uh, up to speculation. I feel like, but uh, Logan not taking that chance, I think, was a really great move. And uh, and um, yeah, so. Uh, but otherwise, uh, pretty decent. Uh, Logan getting hitting a bulk of the offense and Ray getting his moments in, uh, and uh, Logan, and of course having some interference, uh, like you do, who, um, who uh, as one of Logan's friends, I'm not sure who uh, that guy was, but uh, handed Logan some brass knucks. Knucks they at first backfire, her and then Santos Escobar um, chases the friend off. Not gonna lie. I was kind of waiting for Santos to hit Ray with the brass knucks, uh, but I guess they're not going to. Uh, I guess they're going to milk out a potential Santos uh, Escobar heel turn uh, for later on. But Logan does ultimately use the brass knucks um, to put away Ray a, and uh, secure the United States Championship. So Logan Paul is now the U.S. Champion. Uh, how long is he going to hold it for? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. He. Um, <laughs> He, and even he said, like, wait and see what I'll do as U.S. champion. Uh, and obviously, you know, um, obviously, you know, teasing at uh, how he'll do as U.S. champion. But, uh, yeah, so congrats to Logan Paul. Uh, somewhat begrudgingly, but uh, at least, at least like Logan Paul. It's not like, um, it's not like Logan Paul is like a total outsider who came in. It's not as bad as, say, David Arquette winning the... Uh, WCW World Heavyweight Championship. At least Logan Paul, he's been there. He's put in the work. He's put on matches, good matches uh, as well. Uh, uh, of course, the year before, uh, which they put, they pointed out on commentary the year before, Logan was fighting for the uh, WWE Universal Championship, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship against Roman Reigns. Um, so Logan Paul has definitely been putting in the work. So him winning the U.S. title isn't totally implausible. Uh, well, uh, but. Uh, plus, Ray didn't lose clean, uh, so, so um, not the last guy who would lose clean on the show, but we'll get to that, obviously, and I'm pretty sure you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah, so, Logan, uh, Logan uh, winning the U.S. title here, congrats to him on the win. Uh, but next up uh, is uh, is uh, for the WWE Women's Championship as the, oh, wait a minute, it's, uh, it, I think I accidentally called Rhea Ripley's title the Women's Championship. Hers the Women's World Championship. This the W Women's Championship as EO Sky defended against Bianca Belair. Her, uh, her uh, pretty decent match uh, for the most part between the two. Ooh, but the big thing is Kyrie Sane is back, baby. <laughs> so uh, Kyrie Sane, who who uh, le who left TV, he. Uh, and I'm looking at the wiki here for reference. Uh, her last match was in July of 2020, and uh, she became an ambassador. She uh, left in uh, December of 2021, uh, and, and now she is back here. Which, uh, which, granted, she was back um, in terms of, like resigning with the company a while ago. Well, oh, um, oh, I guess it was just a matter of I, I believe, like as far back as I think August, uh, is she had uh, signed with the company and. Uh, pretty much, pretty much just waiting for her to return. At either like August or September. I know it was a little bit ago where she was like as part of the internal roster, as in, or at least signs where she'll be back in some capacity. Uh, but here was the night, and and uh, not gonna lie, like many people, I thought it was Dakota Kai at first, but uh, but of course while Bailey had the ref distracted, uh, Kyrie Sane who returned and attacked. Um, Hacked, uh, hacked uh, Bianca Belair. Air almost didn't recognize who it was first, and that I saw her. I was like, "Oh, that's Kyrie." He, uh, he, so she, he uh, helped out Io Sky there. Air, um, Air ultimately, uh, be, ultimately, uh, well, and she attacked Bianca while she was on the outside. So Bianca rolled back in, and then, uh, be, and then Io hit the moon salt in order to retain. So Io is celebrating with Kyrie. But there's a problem, um, and uh, they put him on com and they mentioned it on commentary, which I do have to mention. Michael Cole made quite a few botches on uh, commentary throughout the night, right? and normally I don't really comment too much on commentary botches unless it's like a major one. But Michael 
Y you okay, man? You, you you okay? Hey, Michael. Uh, I guess age is starting to catch up to him. Michael Cole, he's he's been around for a while. Y you gotta remember, Michael Cole has been around for a while. He's he's uh, no spring chicken, but uh, um, but yeah. So oh uh, uh but but they mentioned on commentary how the person to drive Kyrie Sane out of WWE was Bailey, so I imagine that will probably play into the story whether Kyrie Sane does join Damage Control or whether or not um, she leads Eo Sky away from Damage Control uh, will remain to be seen. But in but uh, but welcome back, Kyrie Sane, and they beat Don Bianca and Kyrie Sane delivering her insane elbow drop, which I have always adored. Uh, so uh, so uh, Kyrie Sane is back here. Uh, in uh, WWE, and it looks like she's, uh, first of all, she's healed, but also she's going to be involved with damage control all upcoming, so where will that story go? We will find out. Uh, but then, and next up, in your semi-main event, uh, Cody Rhodes battles Damian Priest. Uh, so these two have been feuding for a while now, oh, and, uh, oh, and, um, and battling here, uh, Damian Priest comes out sans briefcase, and, which leads people to chant, "Where's your briefcase?" Uh, but, uh, but, um, but yeah, uh, uh, okay match between the two. Who, uh, who, uh, the Judgment Day interferes. Cody uh, and Jay Uso takes them out. Oh, uh, Cody does take out. I believe it was JD. He and it was funny because JD was about to attack Cody, but Cody sensed it and then attacked JD. He, which uh, very rarely happens when it comes to that. At a course, uh, Judgment Day chicanery, uh, referee interference, uh, referee distraction, I should say, and Jay uh, nailing uh, the Judgment Day, the male members. That is obviously. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't think Rhea was with with them, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but, uh, pretty much chasing them off, Cody ultimately, uh, picking up the win over Damien, and, uh, delivering the triple crossroads, and I mentioned it before, every time he delivers the triple crossroads, it gives me PTSD back to WrestleMania 39, when Solo cost him the match against Roman, but, uh, nevertheless, Cody picks up the win here over, uh, Damien Priest, he's, now, can the Judgment Day please face someone else? Like, I, um, I think the thing, the main thing about the Judgment Day, like, I like the Judgment Day. I love the Judgment Day, actually. I love everybody in uh, the Judgment Day. Hey, um, hey, hey, I like Cody Rhodes. I like Jey Uso. I like Sami Zayn. I like Kevin Owen. And even though Kevin Owens is now on SmackDown. But the thing is, the Judgment Day facing the same people over and over and over again. And Cody Rhodes facing the same people over and over again. Jey Uso now almost in that territory of like facing the same people over and over again. Sami Zayn. And like it it's starting to it's starting to wear on me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I don't wanna see them like if they face off multiple times throughout the spans of their careers I think uh, that's fine like like that's happened before uh, or in various like wrestling trilogies and stuff like that legendary wrestling trilogies and stuff like that but the fact that it happens so close those um, so close in proximity where it's almost like an every week basis where like the last um, pre APU slash premium live event uh, fast lane was Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso versus the Judgment Day like like Ain't nothing wrong with feuds continuing on, on but the fact that it's almost like the same thing over and over again. It's been like this for months. And, uh, there's a difference between you know, actually building the rivalry and having them face off multiple times versus kind of stalling for time. And I feel like it's definitely in that like stalling for time, um, that stalling for time territory. Yeah, and it is a little bit annoying, I'm not going to lie. But... Uh, but, uh, but what do you guys think? Let me know. Oh, and then, in your main event, and Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief, he defends his w Undisputed W Universal Championship against the Megastar, with everybody saying, L.A. Knight. Yeah. Uh, so, L.A. Knight, uh, and it's crazy. Someone posted on Twitter, or a photo, a year ago, L.A. Knight was Max Dupree. He, the leader of the Maximum Male Models, and now here he is a year later, uh, facing for the World Championship, it being a being pretty much a megastar in the company. Man, how does time change? How do you almost get saddled with that gimmick? Like, like, like um, it's still insane to think about. But L.A. Knight, now granted, uh, L.A. Knight. Um, uh, okay, so, 
Oh, anyway, so LA Knight going into this match, I knew he wasn't winning. Like, I think pretty much everybody could see that coming, that LA Knight was not going to win this match. Uh, but we were hoping that he at least looked good in defeat, which, thankfully, he definitely did. It was still a pretty solid match uh, between him and Roman, and obviously Roman getting his typical stuff in, you know, the crowd shushing and the walking around on which. Uh, this match, if I'm not mistaken, yep, the longest match of the night. I, uh, yeah, and, and funnily enough, the World Heavyweight Championship match between Seth and Drew was the second longest. Uh, but 20 minutes, it's, um, it's a lot, a lot of Roman shtick, a lot of, uh, Roman in being Roman, essentially, uh, but, uh, but LA Knight definitely looked good in there, er, uh, getting quite a few spots, including the elbow and the BFT. He, of course, Roman being saved by the bloodline. I'm pretty sure you saw that coming, and including solo interfe um, distracting the referee while Jimmy attempted to take out LA Knight, but LA Knight does take out Jimmy. He, uh, solo, ap after he tries to interfere, he's pretty much just like, you know, um, we, we don't see him for the rest of the match, but uh, Jimmy taken out, out uh, until Roman uh, spears uh, hers, uh, Knight through the barricade and then throws him back in the ring and spears him again. Uh, and but um, and that's of course how Roman wins the match. Uh, but but um, <clears throat> but LA Knight still put up a pretty solid fight, uh, including uh, they let LA Knight kick out of a spear. Uh, or, uh, it was almost a late kick out. The ref, the ref uh, you can tell, definitely did have to bail him out a little bit there. But, but um, th those kinds of things happen. But, but uh, LA Knight still looking good in defeat. Really uh, looking like a plausible threat to Roman. Uh, and um, and it having to be Roman Reigns using interference um, to beat LA Knight. I, uh, I, which, even Wade Barrett, who's supposed to be like the heel commentator, uh, or... Um, uh, pretty much calling eh, it out, saying Ellie Knight got screwed, which in kayfabe he kind of did, but uh, uh, in actuality we knew he wasn't winning the match. But uh, Roman Reigns having to win with bloodline interference—that's uh, nothing new, and it does put over uh, the story and um, put putting over that Roman can't win without the bloodline, which I'm surprised, um, at, at least to my knowledge, nobody has brought up yet who he's feuding with. Uh, if, uh, that Roman can't win without bloodline interference, uh, and because he definitely would have a point. Uh, and yeah, it, it does get a little repetitive, if, um, like Roman always having to rely on the bloodline, but it does fit into the story so that when uh, there is no bloodline interference, such as, say, a, um, such as, say, a, um, uh, money in the bank when he was facing the bloodline that being Jimmy and Jey Uso uh, so, um, uh, It makes sense as to him losing there because the bloodline is what keeps him strong They're telling that story, but I feel like um, I feel like they also don't want to fully admit it even though admitting it would tie into the story that Roman can't win without the bloodline like I like that like that would fit into the narrative if, uh, if uh, Roman's not quite the tribal chief, he's he's uh, very much a coward. Uh, but the fact that nobody's really called him on that, at least not, again, not to my knowledge, and maybe it's because I don't watch Raw and SmackDown on, like, a regular basis. I mainly, like, catch the highlights and stuff. But, uh, yeah, that'd be a great thing to bring up. Uh, but, but nevertheless, Roman gets the win here. And I hope you liked Roman here, because that's the last you're seeing of him in 2023, yeah, at least in terms of matches. Uh, Roman's not scheduled... Um, at least not in terms of matches, is or I don't, I don't even think he's scheduled at all. I don't know until 2024. So, oh, grant. So granted, that's not too long. The year's pretty much over. Uh, or only like one more month to go. But uh, yeah, Roman is. Uh, Roman is gone. This was his last match. But uh, but at the very least, uh, Roman still gets to keep the championship. But LA Knight still looks like a major star. Honestly, I know some people are kind of mixed about it. Some people like it. Some people hate it. Um, me personally, he uh, he uh, having L.A. Knight lose this way, like they probably didn't want to pop the championship on him just yet, uh, especially if they're holding out for that um, potential Rock or Cody Rhodes uh, match at WrestleMania 40. 
but I think this was also a fail save so that uh, LA Knight still looks uh, strong in defeat uh, he, and uh, still puts up a really good fight against the Tribal Chief. This is really LA Knight's like big coming out. Uh, he looks like a major or mega star or, um, in terms of his in-ring acumen. And so I think this uh, does protect him while also they essentially have their cake and they eat it too. Um, does uh, WWE, but uh, nevertheless, that is going to do it for Crown Jewel. So, uh, if I had to pick the strongest and weakest match of the night, uh, the strongest matches, uh, I'd probably go with the two world championship matches. I thought those were pretty solid, kind of for different reasons. Seth and Drew, who put on a really good match, and LA Knight still looked great, even in defeat against Roman. If I had to pick the weakest, uh, I might have to go with Cody Rhodes and Damian Priest, only in comparison to the other matches on the card. Uh, but but nevertheless, that is going to do it for this um, review. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, turn post notifications so you know every time I upload a video so you can see, so, uh, see, so, see it as soon as it drops. Uh, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on um, on this review uh, and on Crown Jewel. Did you like Slight like Crown Jewel? Did you like Slight like my review of Crown Jewel? Let me know. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you guys later. Peace.